Hi, my name is Philip Weinsrich. I'm a computer science student at Florida State University, and I'm going for the Bachelor's of Science. I'm making this presentation for COP4020, Programming Languages, and my topic is debugging, including the GDB debugger, as well as Valgrind. In my free time, I like to play video games, read books, play with my dogs, and play the guitar, which you can see propped up against the wall behind me. Let's get to the presentation. Alright, once again, my name is Philip Weiserich, and my topic is debugging, including the Valgrind debugger and GDB. During this presentation, I'll go over a few different topics, including what is a debugger, why debuggers are important in computer science, the different kinds of debuggers, specifically the GDB debugger and the Valgrind debugger, and also the DDD debugger, which is one that I found while doing research for this project. If you are new to the computer science field, then you may not know what a debugger is. A debugger is a computer program that is used to test other programs. It's commonly used after a program is written or while it is being written to find bugs and errors that the programmer missed. There are many different kinds of debuggers, including single language debuggers, which focus on one language and one language only, multi-language debuggers, which are able to debug multiple different kinds of languages, debuggers that use console input and output to display their information, such as GDB, or debuggers that use a graphics, graphical user interface called a GUI or GUI, such as the DDD debugger. There are also open source debuggers that allow people to see and edit their own code or closed source debuggers that do not allow uh, public access to the code for the debugger. All debuggers share the same overall goal though. Their goal is to make the programming process easier for the developer by shortening the time it would normally take to manually find a bug. The idea of a debugger has been around for a long time, almost as long as computers have been around. Well, the original date of the first debugger is disputed. It's known that the original debuggers were all on CRT machines. The problem with the original debuggers is that they were only able to give very basic information and weren't very reliable on finding all of the bugs. Re reliability increased with the release of new higher level languages because the high level languages have built an exception handling and people are able to create debuggers focused exclusively on those languages. The benefit of having a debugger focus only on one language is that it will know common problems with the language and it will know where to look first for problems. Over time, there is a creation of something called the symbolic debugger, which is able to map variable names to memory locations. And this allowed it to be easier for the programmer to know exactly what the debugger was telling them, before they would only be given the memory location of the variable that had the problem, and that doesn't really help too much. Eventually, the breakpoint was created, which was one of the biggest step forwards in debugging. The breakpoint allows the programmer to set a point where the program stops before it should, and that really helps in finding where the future problems could be. Just as there are many different kinds of debuggers, there are many different ways to debug your code. One such way is called print debugging, which involves printing the information stored in your code to the screen, generally through console output. Another method is called remote debugging, which is when a program is debugged on a different system than the one it was written on, or, on a dis or just on a different operating system altogether. Postmortem debugging is when a program is debugged after it has already crashed, and this is usually done through a memory or core dump, and generally takes place after a segmentation fault has occurred or an unexpected exception has happened. Delta debugging is debugging through automated, automated test cases, and is generally done on larger projects when debugging by hand just isn't very efficient anymore. And finally, there is one called the SAF squeeze, which is when you debug by removing code or commenting out code that you already know is correct to narrow down the possibilities of what could be actually causing the problem. 
while this is not a complete list of all the ways to debug, this is just a few ideas of the most popular methods. Debugging has become an essential step in the programming process. Before there were debuggers, all code had to be fixed by hand without any real help from the machine, other than some very basic information. With debuggers, however, the time that it takes to fix code and find all the bugs is drastically shortened than how it was before debuggers existed. Debuggers also help us by giving a certain level of guarantee quality to a code. You know, if it passes the debugger, then it's not going to have any obvious errors, it's not going to have any obvious crashes, and while it may not be perfect, it's better than it would have been if the debuggers weren't around. The first debugger in particular that I'd like to talk about is the GDB debugger, which was created by the GNU Linux operating system team for the GNU Linux operating system. Like most debuggers, the GDB debugger has four main functions, namely being able to start the program and specify anything that might affect behavior, stop the program under certain conditions, examine what happens when the program stops, and changing the program to see what fixing one bug would do to another. The GDB debugger is a multi-language debugger, meaning that it supports more than one language. The most popular languages it supports are Ada, C, C++, Objective-C, and Pascal. GDB is a closed source debugger, which means that the public is not allowed to see the source code for the debugger, nor is it easy to create your own modifications or enhancements for it. It is a console I.O. debugger, meaning that all of your input and output goes through the command line rather than through a GUI. And it also supports a method called reverse debugging. Reverse debugging is when you debug in, well, the reverse order. You see what happens last first, so that you see the last thing that happened before your program crashed or before the problem occurred. And you're able to step backwards through your program to see what first caused that to happen. Because of the popularity of the GNU operating system and the wide range of languages that GDB supports, it is a very flexible uh, debugger. This means that it's able to do a lot of things. It's able to do things that single language debuggers may only be able to do on their own language, or might not be able to do at all. It's very, very flexible, and that's why it's so popular. The next debugger I'd like to talk about is the Valgrind debugger. Valgrind was created by Julian C. Word for the x86 GNU and Linux operating systems. Today, Valgrind runs on most Linux and Android platforms, as well as most of the new Mac OS X platforms. Like GDB, Valgrind is a multi-language debugger and supports C, C++, Java, Perl, Python, assembly languages, Fortran, and Ada which is more than GDB, but still most of the same languages as GDB. Valgrind has a lot in common with the GDB debugger. It has the same four principles as the GDB debugger, and has a GDB server at its core. This means that whenever you do something in Valgrind, it's actually being passed through GDB. What makes Valgrind different is that it's a multi-tool debugger. It uses a multiple different tools to do what it does. For instance, there's a tool called Memcheck, which handles the memory allocation errors, one called Massif, which analyzes the heap, Hellgrind and DRD, which are multi-thread debugging, and CacheGrind, which analyzes for cache errors. Because Valgrind is an open source debugger, most of these tools are made by the community, and it is also expanding due to this fact. Like GDB, Valgrind is a console I.O. debugger, meaning that all input and output is handled by the console and not through a graphical user interface. And it also supports reverse debugging, just like GDB does. The next debugger I'd like to talk about is called DDD, which stands for Data Display De Debugger. DDD is a GUI, or graphical user interface, that supports other debuggers like GDB, DBX, WDB, 
Ladybug, JDB, XDB, The Pearl Debugger, The Bash Debugger, Bash DB, Remake, and The Python Debugger, PyDB. It is used commonly because it is able to display information such as data structures in graphical formats instead of just text like GDB and Valgrind does. DDD was created by the same GNU Linux team that created GDB, which means that it has the same four main functions as GDB. However, the main difference between it, other than its graphical user interface, is that it has a much larger support of languages than GDB does. These languages include C, C++, Java, Modula 2, Modula 3, Pascal, Chill, Ada, and Fortran, as well as others not listed here. Like GDB, DDD is a closed source debugger, meaning that the community is not able to easily create their own methods or additions for this debugger. However, its ability to create graphical images of data structures sets it apart from GDB and what's, is what makes it special. It is, this is my example of a GUI debugger, as the other two were both console IOs. In conclusion, debuggers have become a vital part of the programming process ever since their creation. I don't know how computer science would function today if they did not exist. Because they've been around for so long and because they're such an important part of what makes programming programming, there's, been a, there's a wide variety of debuggers available, from console I.O. to GUI, to multi-language single language like the JTest Java de only debugger. There are just such a so many debuggers available that I wasn't able to talk about today, but I did include in my paper. There are open source debuggers that allow users to create their own variety and to increase how many debuggers exist in the world. And by this pattern they should only be able to become more in-depth, more varied as time goes on, and only improve from here. This is a list of sources that I used to write this presentation as well as my paper. I hope you learned something, I know I did, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.